choose to make them exit like you add places and then and you're just getting better buildings and people and places and then you're like oh my god hey 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 calm down calm down uh listen i didn't want to do it but the kids love it when i react to art tips on tiktok and these views are what helps me pay the bills and allow me to feed my village so uh let's look through some tiktok art tips when this video comes out i'm gonna be in la so i'm feeling a little bit vacationing okay tiktok artist i'm back again to end you let's go oh <laughs> I can get behind that. I like that. You know, whenever somebody's like, Sam, how do you draw a hand? How do you draw the ear? How do you draw the nose? I'm just like, bro, crop it out of the frame. I vibe with this energy. This is such a good way to open this video. That's an S tier tip right there. 10 out of 10, great job. But seriously guys, do not run from your responsibilities. I will find you and have- Do you keep smudging your sketchbook pages because you're too impatient to wait for something to dry? Can't relate to that problem because I work digital. Digital art, superior to traditional art. Just for the record guys, I love both mediums equally, but I like to provoke the traditional artists because they're always like, your computer does everything for you. Instead of working on just one page at a time, work on both pages with two separate illustrations. That way you can switch back and forth when one needs to dry. Plus this usually ends up with illustrations that complement each other. Pretty big brain, that's a good tip. If you paint in a sketchbook and do anything like this, this is very good. 10 out of 10, I know if I painted in a sketchbook, I would really appreciate that tip. How to make your art glow. I'm guessing it's gonna be like a hard light blend layer, but let's see. That was it. What? But that was a pretty good tip. You know, if you want something to glow, you gotta add that halo effect around it. You want the color to bleed out. You want a nice, bright, saturated kind of glow coming off of that object. And if you guys use Photoshop or Procreate, I think one of the most efficient ways to make that effect is using a hard light layer and then picking a very bright color. And you take that airbrush and you just pfft. What? Is that real? Is that an actual thing? That's how these companies get you. They're like, hey, when your marker runs out, just buy another set. They don't tell you about this. That's all they care about. They just want the money and you gotta cut your uh, fingernails. That's ridiculous. Oh, small head and small eyes. I think this is very specific to you personally. If somebody else was drawing and they tend to make the head too small, then your tip of smaller head would uh, muted color palette? No! I'm very passionate about using high saturation and exploring what you could do with the colors in your painting. So I wouldn't say you should mute your color palette because if you use a muted color palette, you're gonna have a very different vibe in that painting versus if you use something way more saturated. The weight of your lines depend on your style. You don't always need to put in small details. You don't always need to make everything look super delicate. If you want to have a rich, thick, powerful kind of drawing, you're gonna need heavy, thick lines. You need those thick boys. If you were going for something more delicate, more elegant, you want those thin boys. So I'm not gonna give you too much of a hard time because you did say small art tips that improved my style. So your specific style. This might have been helpful to you, but it's not gonna be helpful to everybody. Take this advice with a grain of salt. I'm gonna give that a three out of 10 because it's so specific to you. Are you bad at drawing backgrounds? Me too. Block it in all and blur it. Congratulations. <laughs> language do you have a background and depth okay the tip itself is actually pretty good if you're just too lazy to do that background just block it in and blur it but at the same time i can't really advocate for that because you know i'm all about not running from your responsibilities if you don't know how to draw a background try to learn how to draw a background don't run from it. If I catch you running from your responsibilities, I will find out where you live and I will destroy you. That was a good tip, but only if you know how to do backgrounds and are just too lazy for it in the moment. So I'm gonna give that an eight out of 10. How do you do nose? Okay, I'm interested. Okay, I mean, this all works, you know, you're doing a good job, but I wanna know what resolution you're working on because I can see like, this is I can count the pixels here. You gotta size up that canvas. What's going on? 
Okay, cool. That's pretty cool. That's how you did a nose. Um, good on you for sharing that with the world. And I think as you get more familiar with drawing the nose, you can actually do it even faster with even more confidence. You wouldn't need to take as many steps. That's going to come with experience. So uh, overall, pretty good. Seven out of 10. Three tips for Not you. this guy. If you're an artist, this is your reminder to do stretches and take care of your wrist. I wear a brace when I'm not drawing. Take a break and drink water. And let me tell you something. I draw every single day for at least an hour. Well, almost every single day. Uh, there are some days. I do have cheat days, but I've been lucky enough to not experience any wrist pain. And I think a big contributing factor to this is the fact that I use my entire arm more than I use my wrist. You know what I mean, guys? I wouldn't just set my hand down and just do everything from the wrist because this is how you get this thing messed up. And this is a really fundamental thing that if you go to any kind of school, they should teach you. When you're actually drawing, you should be using your fingers, your wrist, your elbow, and your shoulder, your entire arm. Everything should be in motion. You shouldn't just have a wrist movement because that's how you hurt this thing. If you're drawing small, you're drawing tiny, move your fingers. Your wrist is going to thank you for it. Is there anything going on in your character's head? Probably, but they look a little stiff. And you wonder how artists are achieving these dynamic and expressive poses. I'm going to teach you a technique called gesture drawing. This is a quick sketch that captures the feeling of a pose and the different forms in motion. Start with the line of action pose and will also help you place your weight. My line here is following the body's angles. From here, I can quickly place his- Okay, so that's really good. The line of action is something that I follow to. You gotta find the angle of that spine, the overall gesture of this pose before you do any small details. Like, and this is something that messes a lot of people up when you're trying to draw a pose, but, the, but then you start focusing on the fingers, you start focusing on the eye. It's like, slow it down and look at the big picture. Head, his chest, his shoulders. This is figure drawing at its very basic. Yes. Oh, yes. In figure drawing classes, a lot of the time you'll spend the first 30 minutes of class as a warm-up doing gesture drawings, 10 minutes each. Oh, this video is so good. Only 22,000 likes. Come on, guys. It's so funny. Like, all of the actual good videos on TikTok don't get as much love as the ones that are very questionable. Oh. How I improve my art. Disclaimer. This method works for me and may not work for you. Good. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Thank you. Did you know that before this, my draft was like this, and I hated it, so no, I- No, it's a, there's nothing to hate. That looks good, what do you mean? Stop it. Dot, took a rest and searched up references. I use Pinterest to search up guides and references that could help and organize them like this. Then I start again, starting by redrawing the part that bothers me the most. Everything about it bothers me, so scratch it all and start you? a new one. Don't do that, guys. Don't do that. Personally learn best through my mistakes. Others who practice on hands only draw hands and work on it. For me, I draw a whole piece. I don't know about that one, but learning from your mistakes is a big thing. Uh, you're not going to like every single piece that you make, uh, but it's important to figure out what you didn't like about it and take note of that going forward so that in the next piece, you're more aware of what made you not like the last piece. But here you're saying to draw a whole piece as opposed to just focus on one single thing. Now, this is where it gets a little bit questionable because if you wanted to focus on just, let's say eyes, uh, and you decided to practice by drawing a whole piece, you're wasting a lot of your time uh, trying to figure everything else out when you're just specifically supposed to focus on one single thing, which is the eyes. If I'm practicing something, I prefer not to waste my time with other things that are not really my point of focus right now. I prefer to focus on just one single thing. It's like Albert Einstein once said, save time, live better. Walmart. I didn't finish the video because I didn't really like the robot voice, but um, based on what I've heard, you know, overall pretty good, you know, uh, seven out of 10. One of the best tips that I learned for drawing portraits in my time in art school. It's going to sound so silly, but bear with me. Here's what I want you to do. There's that classic uh, chaotic TikTok jump cut. Where nothing makes any sense. Things don't really flow together. I want you to put it upside down. When you're drawing a portrait, it's never going to look like the person you're drawing until the very end. So your brain's gonna get really frustrated. Flipping it upside down, now that's tricking your brain into focusing only on the shapes, the shadows, the lines, the highlights. That's an interesting tip. Um, I don't know if that's gonna work for everybody though, because flipping upside down sometimes 
almost makes that portrait even harder to draw because now you don't have a reference for a, for a face. You don't understand what's going on anymore. I would actually advise you flip the canvas horizontally because that gives your brain a quick refresh. So if your mind has gone numb to the mistakes that you're making on that canvas, if you flip that horizontal, you're gonna give your brain a quick split second where it's gonna be able to spot the things that don't look right. I had to spend thousands of dollars and years in art school to learn tips like that. You ever do a sketch and you're like, this looks really good, and then you add line art and it just... <laughs> this is precisely why I don't do this kind of workflow. The weight of a line is dictated by how much pressure you're putting on your pen. In terms of gravity, this cloth is being pulled down, so I'm gonna thicken the lines that probably have the most weight. Natural shadow where lines intersect, so you can thicken those. When you're doing like actual line art, make sure that the line has variations in its thickness and thinness. And the thicker the line, the heavier the weight. So you're gonna find that heavier weight in areas where there's uh, gonna be a bit more tension, where things intersect, or in the areas where there might be a bit more darkness, where the planes are transitioning, where there's an interesting kind of angle coming out. You gotta have variation in thick and thin in your line quality uh, for your line art to look interesting. Very good tip, 10 out of 10. Five common anatomy mistakes, part three. Number one, skipping leg day. Legs are kind of curvy and point in and down like little triangles. That's true. Legs, just like any other limb in your body, are going to have a bit of a taper as they get towards the joint. Just like how your forearm might have a bit of a taper towards the wrist. Look up some anatomy references if you don't know what I'm talking about. Side body. We have a tendency to draw around the entire arm, but we actually don't need to do that. That's facts. Good job. Three long arms. When I was younger, I would do these all the time, but the elbow goes in the middle of the torso, hand at the middle of the thigh. This person, Sparketh, uh, I've seen their video before, and uh, this person knows what they're talking about. Then we have tilts. This guy's a very straight posture, but it's more comfortable if you add the tilt. Okay, this person knows what they're talking about. I like this. Yes, you gotta find the angle between your two shoulders and the angle between your hips. I think this also came up in the previous video where, where they talked about gesture drawing. It's a, a very fundamental thing that you gotta know if you wanna capture poses accurately. Good job with this video. That's a 10 out of 10 for me. Here are the three things that I wish I knew before starting digital art. Three things, okay, okay, okay. Use Pinterest to your advantage. You can create boards full of artwork that inspires you or how to do digital painting or just references on how to draw human beings. Drawing life? Isn't it the other way around? Isn't it called life drawing? How? I was searching all the time. And when you first start out, it's hard to draw digitally. So don't overcomplicate it at first. Draw traditionally on paper and take a picture of it and just insert it in any document that you need and start drawing away. <sighs> I'm sure it's a good tip. I'm sure it's gonna help you out, but this is running from your responsibilities. If you're starting digital art, you might as well tough it out and try your best to draw that same sketch straight onto the tablet because eventually uh, you're gonna have to be able to do that. You're literally just gonna make this problem last even longer for yourself. So don't, don't do that, don't do that. Face your responsibilities, guys. And the final tip, your canvas size and the DPI matters. So anything well over a thousand pixels is usually typically pretty good and the DPI is typically set at 300. I'd recommend setting these things a little bit higher than that, but it ensures crisp line art. And remember, DPI stands for dots per inch. So the more dots per inch you got, the more resolution you got. So that third tip I like, that's pretty good. Your canvas size definitely matters because digital art is made up of pixels. And if you don't have enough of that, your art is gonna look like a bunch of Minecraft blocks. And I work at 300 DPI. I think the standard for printing is like, 300 dpi uh, i don't think you need to go too high above that but yeah it's not just about the motion of the ocean when it comes to canvas size you know the size actually does matter literally the most fun way to improve at art is just to force the things you make into a cinematic universe like you start out with something you like and then you're like oh my god i want more things so you make more people choose to make them exit like you add places and then and you're just getting better buildings and people and places and then you're like oh my god I hey 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 calm down Calm down. And then they literally start moving. And then you're like, oh my God, I want to see, like, how did the, how, how did they get dressed? What are their fits? And then you just draw the fit. Wait, I, it's good. Where do you find the time for this though? Here's a super cool tip for digital artists. Did you accidentally do your line art on your sketch layer? That's totally fine. Oh, no. All you have to do is make a new layer, set the blending mode to multiply, turn off your device, get up and run towards the horizon as fast as you can to start your life anew in the woods. I got trolled again. Ugh. I thought you were actually gonna have a fix for it. Ugh, you little sh All right, so there's another look at some art tips on TikTok. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Hope you guys learned something new from this. And as always guys, don't just 
take advice from anybody. Make sure you are learning from the people that you trust and listening to people who you actually look up to and admire. And make sure that you are picking out advice that works for you and throwing out the other ones, okay? Even advice from me. You don't have to follow every single one of them. This is just the stuff that works for me and the things that I believe in. It's okay to have different opinions. Um, we just can't be friends. Anyways, if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. And with that being said, I will see you kiddos on the next video. Keep drawing. Yeah. Okay, you know what, guys? Um, let me tell you a secret. As much as I don't want to like TikTok, I do find these videos kind of interesting. I almost enjoy watching them. A little bit concerning, but you know, it is what it is. What can you do?